Phoenix will rise up from all those ashes today. Yeah, you were scarred, but you a czar. You can call it to the grave. I know you know that a lion's inside, sleeping in your heart. Step back and remember who you what up, Pride? It's your boy Mari back again with another reaction video. Today we are getting into Hamilton part. I don't even know what part we're on now. I think part six. Uh, we got a few more songs that we're getting into today. I'm very excited. I've been enjoying Hamilton so, so much. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. If you're new here, definitely make sure to check out the other parts of my Hamilton reactions on the Hamilton playlist on my channel. That will be linked in the description down below as well as in the pinned comments. But without further ado, let's get into this. And I'll be seeing all of you guys on the other side. Okay, so uh, the, the plot is thickening. I love the use of the, the look around, look around, how lucky we are to be alive right now from Skylar Sisters, which I believe Eliza is the one who sang that. In Sky Actually, no, it might have been all, all of the sisters. She was one of the people singing that in uh, the Skylar Sisters because using it in this song after like everything that has happened recontextualizes the line from look at how lucky we are to be alive during such an exciting and, and fun time where all of this interesting stuff is happening in New York to now being look at how lucky we are to not have died in the war look at how lucky you are to still be here to see your son that is a blessing um and that's like such a that's a paradigm shift on that line with no words changed in it you know the the context of of everything that's happened in the plot and all of the the different changes this coming right after that massive like blowout that he had with washington is it's like su that's like such an interesting way to uh use that line as far as narratively what it's saying and then furthermore this song also referencing that line from skylar sisters also helps us see like how much eliza has changed not only in her mindset, but just like as a person. In that song, she's a starry-eyed girl hanging out with her sisters, cooing over all of the boys in the city and all of like the interesting stuff that's happening. Now she is a worried wife of a military man who is pregnant with their child and her husband is like actively trying to fight to get himself in more danger. And she, I guess, wrote a letter to Washington. So maybe she's the reason that... Uh, Washington sent Hamilton home. He just like kind of used this blowout as like an excuse to get him to go home. Yeah, it's 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 so interesting. I know that I keep talking about like the recurring motifs that are happening in the songs, but I like that they're not done in a monotonous way. Each of the recurring motifs that come up in the songs gives you something new. It's either, hey, we're gonna use a piece of this song in this song, and that is gonna inform like what mindset you should be in in this song or what this song is is doing narratively or it's recontextualizing a character it's recontextualizing a, a particular mindset or line like it's it's so interesting that's why i keep talking about it I, I like it a lot and so um yeah i don't know if they ever stop doing the recurring motif thing this might get like really really long as like as songs continue to go on and reference each other and reference each, like by the end of this i might like have one of those boards up with all of the pins connecting each other with string i don't know but point is i'm enjoying it and i like like musically that this references so many other musical things and then that informs things narratively that are either impactful or shifted in the way that we see them i relish being Creating in your mind, small 
Sorry, I'm gonna have to cut that out or bleep that or something. Okay, so I'm gonna explain to you. Oh, shit, I'm gonna explain to you why this makes me emotional. Hold on. Ah! It'll make sense, I promise. Oh my goodness, hold on. Why are you crying now? Tighten up, dude. Tighten up. You got a job to do. Okay, I'm gonna explain to you why this particular. Scene makes me emotional. It's gonna be a little long, but I promise it will explain like why the, there are tears in my eyes right now. Um, so, sorry, let me <laughs> get right real quick. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Enneagram. It's a form of typology like Big Five or MBTI or whatever. What Enneagram does is it categorizes people into nine groups based off their innate desires and fears. And then like there are subtypes and whatever. It gets more complicated than that. But the, the general gist of it is that it categorizes people into nine groups based off of their desires and fears. So in the Enneagram system, Hamilton would be a three core. Threes are people who are wired in a way that they desire to be valuable and they fear not being valuable. But the catch there is that that value is tied to achievement. As a result of that, if not in a healthy mindset, a three can see themselves as having no inherent value if they have not achieved anything yet. Obviously leads to like workaholism because for a lot of people where you work is the main way in which you get achievement. Uh, it leads to people having a hard time separating themselves from what they do because again, what they do is how they get achievement and how they get achievement is how they have value. For threes, their inner value is attached directly to that achievement. It's not just like, oh, you're good as a person. It is, oh, you are good because you have done X, Y, and Z. And like Hamilton, I am also a three core. So I understand where Hamilton is coming from. I understand the struggle that he is having, feeling like because he can't provide the life that he wants to provide for his wife, he doesn't have value to her and that it's hard for him to wrap his mind around the fact that she loves him in spite of that. But the thing is, Eliza does. She genuinely loves him for him, not for what he's accomplished, which so far is not much, or what he has the potential to accomplish. In fact, she loves him so much that she is telling him, hey, you don't need to accomplish anything. If, if you continue on this path of accomplishment, it can be self-destructive. And that is the exact kind of love that a person who is a three needs. Because again, when you attach your value to achievement, and you haven't achieved anything, it's very hard to conceptually understand that other people can love you just for you, not for the things that you feel would make you worthy of love. So I am very impacted by this song in a way that may not make sense to other people who aren't wired in the way that me and Hamilton are, because I understand how important love like this is for people like him. This kind of love can help him be more mentally healthy, can help him, you know, silence his inner demons and help him be a more balanced functional person. And so as I'm watching this scene, I understand him. Like I, I can't just sit here and be like, Hamilton, get it together. You got Honey Badger Jr. on the way. Give up everything that you're trying to accomplish and all the stuff you're trying to do because it's dangerous. Because I also understand that for him, that is a very difficult thing to do. And even with all of that being said, Eliza loves him knowing who he is. She said, I know the man I married. She said, we don't need a legacy. We don't need stuff. Like you are enough. I love you. Not because of what you have given us and what our child will inherit, but just who you are is enough. That's a really hard pill for people like Hamilton to swallow. And yet it is very necessary for having healthy mental health. Yeah, I love this song. I love their like relationship. I love their dynamic. I think Eliza is amazing. I'm so happy that they ended up together. I'm just going based off what I'm seeing, which is Eliza loving Hamilton in a way that I know he needs to be loved and in a way that I know is healing for him. And um, that makes me emotional. So, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can make it through the rest of this without crying. I don't, I don't. 
I know y'all not gonna believe me because most of y'all have not been following me that long, but I'm I'm really not a crier. I don't just be crying this much over stuff, okay? I don't know what Hamilton got in the sauce that it just be making me super emotional, but like this is this is like two teary moments in three videos. I don't like that, okay? I'm gonna need them, I'm gonna need them to fix this. But uh this is my genuine reaction to this, so it is what it is. How does a ragtag volunteer arm me in need of a shower? Somehow defeat a global superpower? How do we emerge victorious from the quagmire? Yo, turns out we have a secret weapon, an immigrant. You know in love who's unafraid to step in. He's constantly confusing, confounding the British henchmen. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting French. Oh, yeah. No, dog, hold it. I wasn't emotionally ready for all of this right after the last song. Ah, okay, all right, hold on. Okay, pull it together, cause, cause now they, they dropping some heat on you. Um, okay, so first things first, they, they super faked me out with like the, the intro. Obviously they brought the intro motif back from Alexander Hamilton and a winter's ball. Um, and in fact, this is, like exactly like the intro motif from Alexander Hamilton, whereas A Winter's Ball is the same progression. It's pitched up, I think it's like an octave, so it's higher, it's brighter, it's it has a, it's recognizable, but it has a slightly different feel and vibe to it, versus this one is just like, like one for one. I think it's essentially the, the same musical intro, uh, not just like the, the instrumental part of the intro, but like full on the whole, uh, backing composition when uh, Aaron Burr is up on the, the little ledge thing. But the, the difference between this and Alexander Hamilton is obviously that the flow on this is different. A Winter's Ball follows a more similar flow to Alexander Hamilton, but this one is more rhythmic and rappy than like exposition-y, which is how it is in Winter's Ball and um, Alexander Hamilton because it's, it's slower and more measured. It, it feels closer to talking than rapping. This one felt like rapping almost immediately. That's really cool. I like that they reference Alexander Hamilton and a winter's ball in this song, but they shift the, the, the focus of it from Alex in uh, Alexander Hamilton and like the ball. It's, it's also Alex again in a winter's ball, but the ball as a whole to being the colonies as a whole talking about how we became a country. And I, I think that that's really dope because it, it shows that Alex's Ascent from you know squalor into greatness matches the colony's ascent from nothing into a country, and then eventually we have the context of knowing, but they didn't at the time that those little thirteen colonies would go on to grow and grow and grow. And so um, I, I think that's like a really dope thing to like show that mirroring between Alexander's personal ascent and the, the colonies ascent as a what would go on to be a country, especially because like Alexander is not just a historical figure that was a part of that. He essentially is a walking, talking embodiment of the American dream, you know, um, coming from nothing into something. And that's kind of what the colonies did as well, did their own form of the American dream. And then they shift the focus again from the colonies to Lafayette, they faked me way out. Like I, I, until the last second where I saw and heard Frenchman, I thought they were gonna be talking about Alexander again. Uh, but no, no, just kidding. They're talking about Lafayette. So I guess Alex goes off and like enjoys life as a dad and a husband as he should stay safe. Uh, and my boy Lafayette takes, takes the, the lead in this military part. So let's get to, oh, one other thing. He said something like um, bl bloody in the red coats, 
making their coats redder or so, something like that. I'm going to see it because I'm, I'm going I'm to go back some. But uh, that was hard. Okay, that was hard. And I needed to say that I, I, I caught that in all of the craziness that was happening. Uh, but I'm going I'm to catch it better because I'm about, I'm about to. Yeah. He's constantly confusing, confounding the British instrument. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting friends. Hey! Okay, all right, all right, all right. This is the, this song is gonna have a, a long. This this gonna be a long breakdown for this song. So uh, buckle up, strap in, boys and girls. Um, he said, "I'm taking the horse by the reins, making red coats redder with stains hard." They continued that on with. Um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a kill him and burn up the remains or some, some, so he, he said he not just gonna make their red coats redder. He, he not just gonna kill him. He gonna cremate them. That's, that's crazy. That's, you hear my voice break just now? Yeah, that's my whole body is still reeling from the last song. Whatever. Shut up. The point is my boy spitting. Speaking of, is he actually French? Because like, if not, this is insane because to, to speak with an accent is hard for a lot of people. It's, it's not an easy thing, but it's, that's level one. To, to speak and act with an accent is harder. Again, a lot of people can't do it. To, to rap and act with an accent that is not your own accent is ins that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, yeah, and he flowing, he flowing too. Like he really, oh my goodness. This song is crazy. We rendezvous with Rochambeau. That's interesting. Rochambeau's the uh, French name for rock, paper, scissors, right? Maybe the idea there is um, like how rock, paper, scissors has like three options that you can play. This war now has three sides because he, he came back with the French. And so if the Brits are beating the revolutionaries, say that they act as rock, right? And the revolutionary are scissors. They're losing that battle. But now with the French in the fold, they can counter what the British are doing, and they, in fact, do counter. They're the reason that we won the war, as I mentioned I was thankful for in a previous video. And so the French now act as paper in that Rochambeau trilogy. And most rock, paper, scissors games, there's two sides. Like, it's two players playing these, these individual hand options. And in this war, there are two sides because it's not like a battle royale where, like, each of the three sides is, like, beating one and losing to the other. It's instead, like... There are two hand signs in this metaphor uh, on one side. So that's one player. And the other player is the one hand sign. And so um, the British and their side are, say, rock. And the, the colonists are scissors. The French are paper. And with the help of paper, scissor can beat rock. And I, I just, I find that so, that's like, come on, dog. We're like like 30 seconds into the song and they had already dropped like 18 bars on us part of it is that he's rapping so fast that like so much is being like do you get him he's, he's embedding so much lyrically into what is happening very quickly but also the the rap songs in hamilton are just chef's kiss incredible so uh yeah yeah this is this is hard this is so hard for this to succeed, that is someone else we need. I know. So he knows what to do when a trench you know it if it's in French, I mean. So you're gonna have to use him eventually. What's he gonna do on the bench, I mean? No one has more resilience or matches my practical, tactical brilliance. Hamilton. You want to fight for your land back? Hamilton. I need my right hand man back. Hamilton. Get your right hand man back. Hamilton. You know you gotta get your right hand man back. Hamilton. You gotta put the button to the letter, but the soul of the better to get your right hand back. Dog. I. Dog. I. Bruh, oh, oh my, oh my goodness, holy shit, oh, excuse my French, huh, um, w wow, wow, is he the one, I know that you guys said one of the friends in um, the My Shot Tavern group, you know, the comedy trio, you guys said that one of them was a rapper and you said the actor's name, I don't know which actor's name relates to which character, but is he the one that's a rapper, I feel like he's, he's that, 
he, he's a rapper. Even if he's not the one who's a rapper, he's a rapper. He's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. And to do it all in a French accent is wild. This, this is wild, dude. Oh my goodness. Um, what did he say right here? Hold on one sec. I got to I got to go back. It was something with the with the, the letter. Got to put some thought into the letter. But the sooner the better to get your right hand man back is crazy, dog. Crazy, especially because the rhyme scheme right here, the rhyme is the in rhyme of the lines is right hand man back. So they just threw in the letter better internal rhyme just for the sake of it. Just just because they could just to flex on us real quick. That's it's crazy. dude. This is crazy. This is so yeah, I'm shook, dude. That's 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 so crazy. Wow, I absolutely could not do this. First off, my accents are terrible. If, if last video wasn't clear, but uh, he's like jumping off tables and, and dancing and accent rapping. Sixteenth note flow. Uh, there's some triplet flows in there. There's, he's changing his flow so much in this. And again, as a person who raps. I like to change my flow a lot when I am rapping. It just, I think it makes it more engaging to the listener and less boring to me when I have to perform it. But this is this is hard. This this is so hard, dude. Oh my goodness. Get the right hand man back. You know you gotta get the right hand man back. You gotta put the thumb to the letter, but the sooner the better to get the right hand man back. Alexander Hamilton. Troops are waiting in the field for you. If you join us right now, together we can turn the tide. Oh, Alexander Hamilton, if we manage to get this right, they'll surrender my early life. The world will never be the same. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, I was gonna make a joke about about this should have been called ham motif, but it, it doesn't. It, it it's stupid. Shut up. You get the point. There's a lot of motifs that are brought back in in these songs. That is like very clearly the the top line melody from the end part of Alexander Hamilton, where the the whole ensemble cast sings like the chorus uh, we are waiting in the wings for you you know what i'm talking about it's it's the same like vocal melody but he's singing different things here uh and he's doing like his own like personal runs and stuff. it's good dude it's it's fire and i like that this song and winter's ball both use like references to alexander hamilton because i feel like both this song and winter's ball were like very critical moments for him and winter's ball is how he met his wife and then this is like he he got pulled back into the military you can reference any song in any song the fact that they are referencing the songs that they are referencing in the songs that they end up get, getting referenced in take a shot every time i say reference julian is really cool to me also shout out to lafayette bro hamilton has some great friends okay between lawrence and lafayette the boy's having his back. Now, technically, what's fair is fair because when Hamilton became George Washington's right man, he pulled in Lawrence, Lafayette, and Mulligan into the fold in, like, the, the second half of that song. And so now that Lafayette has, like, gained esteem, he took over for Charles Lee because, you know, Charles Lee, he, he did terrible at the Battle of Mon, Monmouth or Monmouth or something like that. And then he went back to France. Uh, he went to go get funds. Ended up with ships and guns, so my boy got a mouth on him. Well, pause. Um, but you get what I'm saying. He's, he's very convincing. He was able to convince the French to give them assistance in their, their revolutionary fight. Because you know, if the French love anything, it's a good old revolution. The French and revolution, that's just, that's a match made in heaven. And also, the French and hating the British. Match made in heaven. French history be lie. Now let me say I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. This is real elite hater energy from you, France. It's enemy of my enemy is my friend to a T right here. But yeah, Lafayette pulled my boy Hamilton back into the fold. I'm happy for him because he's getting what he wanted, but also like I'm I'm kind of saddened for Eliza in, in this situation because we just had a whole song about why she wants him to stay home and why that's important 
and now he like immediately one song later gets pulled back into the fold but she gave him his jacket and and he's off actually you know what is i don't know if this song is over but this song is so crazy i'm just gonna start it over i'm just gonna go back to when bird gets up on the ledge and just just watch it all again because i can this is my channel you can't stop me so shut up <laughs> How does a ragtag volunteer arm me in need of a shower? So Yo. Turns out we have a secret weapon, an immigrant. He's constantly confusing, confounding the British henchmen. Everyone give it up! Oh, 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 one other thing. Okay, so this song brings back the trifecta of alliteration that was like a big thing in Right Hand Man with, uh, hold on, I'm not gonna remember each, what it is, like confidently, uh, constantly confusing, confounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Lafayette later says, uh, engage him, enrage him, enslave him. I don't, I don't know what he said. It's three phrases that start with in something and then ends with um instead of like them. Again, that was a big part of George Washington's whole vibe when he gets introduced as this like super cool and lauded general uh, back in Right Hand Man. And in Right Hand Man, we get an understanding of the way that George Washington's brain works, which is demonstrated in part by his use of that alliteration, as we talked about in that video. And they bring that alliteration back from that song into this song. And I think that that's really cool. See, that's why I went back. See, I, I wouldn't have said that. I didn't notice that before, but I noticed it now. So there you go. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting friends. That's another one right there, favorite fighting Frenchman. I, I, you guys probably noticed all of these already, but I, I didn't. I was literally like coming off of being in tears the first time we saw this. The second time I was just so floored at everything that was happening. Now I'm like actually like processing the lyrics even more. And um, yeah, fire, fire. I, that has to be intentional. There's way too much alliteration in this song compared to like the rest of the songs that's only rivaled by right hand man and so that that connection that has to be a thing we rendezvous with rochambeau consolidate their gifts we can end this war at york town ships they they did they, they did the, the arm thing and then southern battle ships i'm talking about the, the choreography the background dancers that i'm now noticing and then they go from the shift into a salute when George Washington walks up, there's a, there's, this is so layered and nuanced. It's like an onion, but does it make you, actually, it does make you cry. It's just an onion. The, Hamilton is just an onion. They could have named it Hamiltonian. Okay, bad puns aside, you get the point, okay? There, there's a lot going on here, and I am allowing myself to, like, pick up on so much of it. I'm having a moment, and I'm enjoying it, especially because I don't know that the next song isn't going to make me cry again, and so I'm, I'm really trying to enjoy the insanity that is this song. Guns and ships and southern balance ships. We rendezvous with Rochambeau, consolidate their gifts. We can end this war at Yorktown. Get your right hand man back. You know you gotta get your right hand man back. You gotta put the button to the letter for the son of the British and get your right hand back. Alexander Hamilton. If we manage to get this right, they'll surrender my early life. The world will never be the same. Alexander. I was younger than you are now. When I was given my first command, I led my men straight into a massacre. Dang. I witnessed their deaths firsthand. Even now I lie awake, knowing history has its eyes on me. Okay, so this song is making further references to Right Hand Man. Specifically, it's referencing the parts of Right Hand Man that reference My Shot, which is interesting because My Shot is about ambition. And this song is a, a culmination of that. And it is all of, the, all of that ambition that he gave up in Right Hand Man. All of the ambition that he talks about in My Shot, he somewhat shelves it albeit momentarily because he he goes on to ask every single day 
for a position of command, but he he's momentarily shelves it in right hand man. And so right hand man references my shot for that reason. And this references right hand man, which references my shot, because that is coming full circle. All of that ambition that he had channeled in my shot is now coming to fruition here. And so they are making direct references to it with the wo o o o o's that are at the end of um my shot. And they even brought back the little little drummer boy percussion was like that part where okay, uh he, Hamilton uh, all of the all of the beat drops out except the like rim shots from the drummer boy and Hamilton's like um, I imagine death so much it feels more like a memory when's it gonna get me in my sleep seven feet ahead of me if I see it coming do I run or do I let it be is it like a beat without a melody you get the point okay you get the point the point is that song is hard and I love it a lot if it wasn't clear I've listened to that song extensively <laughs> since I reacted, probably an ungodly amount since I reacted to it. Uh, because as I mentioned earlier, I really, I get Hamilton. I wouldn't have gone about all of this in the exact same way, but I'm, I'm wired in a similar way that he is. So like that, that song resonates with me and it, it's also just fire. So I, I've listened to it a lot, but yeah, yeah. This, this, what, what was the point there? Why, why did you start talking about, oh, oh, the, the percussion of this and the whoa oh ohs. There's also like piano happening in the song. I don't know if it's the same piano from that part of my shot. It may be. I'll go back and I will listen to it when I unpause to see for certain. But the point is they're making direct references to that portion of my shot, which I just think is so dope because it's it's like tying all of this full circle from not the birth of his ambition, but like the outward exclamation of his ambition, as well as that part is like an internal monologue talking about his mindset uh, to the kind of shelving of that ambition in right hand man to work with this man who then goes on to bring that initial ambition to fruition via giving him this this command here so i think that's that that's so dope the the, the writing in this is so dope and i know i've talked about motifs like constantly in the past few videos but again the the way they're using these motifs are just so so intelligent they're so interesting let me tell you what I wish I'd known When I was young and dreamed of glory You have no control Who lives, who dies, who tells your story I know that greatness lies in you But remember from here on in History has its eyes Okay, so um, that's why that's why I'm supposed to stop. Let's hope that my mic doesn't like lose its mind in the outro this time. <laughs> okay, let's let's go. Okay, so that was incredible. That that was that was probably my favorite part so far. That's hard. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of great songs and a lot of great moments in Hamilton. Uh, th at least up until this point. Obviously, I can't talk about what I haven't seen. But uh, in the the five now six parts that i've seen there are a lot of, of great things that happen but between uh the emotionality of the song and the full circle moment for eliza and then going into the, the second bit uh where we had the insanity and in incredible lyricism music choreography everything uh and also like the full circle moment for hamilton and kind of george washington in their relationship uh and just like the payoff that it was it was great it was it was so great this is going to be the shortest outro of the, the previous few videos because I, I don't know what else to it was it was incredible i enjoyed this so so much all all of that was musically great narratively great the choreography was cool. The acting was great. Hamilton's face was distraught. Eliza looked worried, concerned, but loving. Washington seemed determined. Lafayette was was just his normal, like cool, suave, but determined. So it was just like it was all great. It was it was all. I have no zero complaints about this part. Everything in this was was amazing. So um, 
other than the fact that okay maybe i'm a little bit worried about like eliza now that hamilton is like actually going to be out there like in battle commanding soldiers but other than that um yeah <laughs> great great thank you so much for being here i really do appreciate it if you've watched until this point just like the last video definitely make sure to drop a sun emoji in the comment section down below so i can thank you personally for watching all the way until this point thank you so so much for coming along with on this journey i really do appreciate it if you haven't done so definitely make sure to subscribe not to miss the future parts to my hamilton reaction we are on our way to 25,000 subscribers so definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button help us get to that threshold and while you're down there definitely make sure to hit that like button it definitely helps the video out a ton pushing it out further in the algorithm so i really do appreciate that but in the meantime you guys have a great day and i'll be seeing all of you guys here on the channel next time peace this trance in the of sinking down in the stew. You change up the brew, now life tastes so brand new. It's delicious like fondue. Under the moonlight tonight, stars and hearts shimmering. Shimmering, you who I am. You're a bad light.